Hey guys, welcome to my legal classes. This is Ganesh Pujari and in the series of Indian Penal Code. Now that we are approaching one another chapter, which is chapter 9, which is all about of offenses by or relating to public servants. What or who are public servants that we have already understood while studying section 21. If you have not watched, watch that lengthy video because that gives complete information as to who is a public servant or who and all are public servants. Now, when we are studying chapter 9, you need to remember that the initial few sections, that is starting from section 161 to 165A are repealed and we are studying from section 166 to 171. And in that series, this is my first video where we are going to understand section 166, which is all about public servant disobeying law with intent to cause injury to any person. Now we are understanding this particular section with the help of chart as well as three very important case laws. Why to waste time? Let's get into the first slide. Section 166 discusses about public servant disobeying law with intent to cause injury to any person. First thing first, let's quickly read through the Berak provision and then let's get into my chart. The Berak provision says, Whoever being a public servant knowingly disobeys any direction of the law as to the way in which he is to conduct himself as such public servant intending to cause or knowing it to be likely that he will by such disobedience cause injury to any person shall be punished with simple imprisonment for a term which may extend to one year or with fine or with both. The Berak provision is quite easy and I am making it further easy with the help of my chart which says a public servant knowingly disobeys any direction of the law as to the way in which he is to conduct himself as such public servant with an intention to cause or knowing that his such disobedience is likely to cause injury to any person shall be punished with simple imprisonment of one year or fine or both. What and all? that you are observing in the chart. First thing, he needs to a public servant. Second one, he need to know that certain conduct of himself is disobedience to the direction of the law. Law is expecting him to do certain conduct in a certain way, but he disobeys any direction of the law. Now, that conduct is done with an intention or with the knowledge that his such disobedience is likely to cause injury to any person. Now, the first thing he is not conducting in the way that law expects him to be. He disobeys it and over and above that he is know that by doing so he is causing injury to someone else or he is doing so with an intention to cause injury to another person. In that case, he shall be punished. And what is the punishment? It can be simple imprisonment of one year or maybe fine or maybe both. That's all you need to understand from section 166. All the ingredients are already covered here, but I have two beautiful case laws where the ingredients are again defined, which is available in my next slide. Prior to that, here is a small illustration. Let us quickly understand that illustration. In the illustration, it says A being an officer directed by law to take property in execution in order to satisfy a decree pronounced in Z's favor by a court of justice, knowingly disobeys that direction of law with the knowledge that he is likely thereby to cause injury to Z. A has committed the offense defined in this section. Now, A is a public officer and there is a direction by the law regarding execution of certain property and by doing so Z would have got justice but A is not doing that which is causing injustice to Mr. Z and A is very well aware that his such disobedience will cause injury to Mr. Z even after knowing that he has committed that so he is covered under section 166. Now that is what we need to understand and there also the ingredients are very clearly coming back 
but in the next slide it is very clearly defined let's go to the important two case laws which are defining the important ingredients to cover under section 166 and then we'll get into one more case law which is also very interesting the class will continue in between i just wanted to share an important update with you guys i have joined the unacademy team as an educator for CLAT 2023 batch and I would like to request you all to download the Unacademy app and follow me there also and while buying the subscription over there please buy the subscription with my code GYAN07 that is GAN07 to get additional 10% discount and what's happening in Unacademy this week a new batch of six month comprehensive batch by NLU alumni is starting on 17th November 8.30 pm by name Score Booster 2022 and beginners batch for CLAT 2023 is starting from 19th November in the name of Evolve and six months to mission NLU 2022 is also happening requesting you all to join an academy to get all of this here there are three important case laws which are all discussing about the ingredients of section 166 or to punish any public servant under section 166 what are the different requirement they all are discussed under these three case laws the first one is Bihar State Electricity Board versus Nandakishore where it was held that to make out an offence under this provision that is under section 166 of IPC it has to be stated that the public servant knowingly disobeyed any particular direction of the law. So knowingly disobeying is the first very important ingredient and which he was bound to obey and further that such disobedience would cause injury to any person to the knowledge of the public servant. So that becomes the second ingredient. One. He is knowingly doing that second one he is knowingly doing that that it is causing injury by doing so now if they are all there then they are coming under section 166 then comes one another very important judgment from the Kerala High Court that is Piyusada versus Gopi where under para 19 it was very clearly mentioned that the essential ingredients of the offense under section 166 of the IPC are a that the accused is or was the public servant at the time of commission of offence b that he knowingly disobeyed any direction of law and c that he knew or intended that by so disobeying he will cause injury to any person i don't think there is any further explanation required here they are in very simple english and i hope that is understood then comes one another important judgment from Telangana High Court that is Mukesh Kumar versus G. Srinivasa Reddy. Here they have mentioned four important ingredients. What are they? The first one being the accused must be a public servant. If you read Kerala High Court judgment, they have very clearly mentioned is or was when he committed such offense. Okay, he need to be public servant. That is what we need to understand. Secondly, there must be a direction of the law as to how he should conduct himself. So that is the second ingredient. And the third one, he must have disobeyed such direction. And fourth one, by such disobedience, he must have intended to cause or knew it to be likely to cause injury to any person. So beautifully covered. One, he is a public servant. Second one, Law should be very clear as to how he needs to be conducted. Number three, he has disobeyed such direction of law. And fourth one, he is aware or he is intentionally doing such disobedience to cause injury to any person. If all these four ingredients are covered, in that case, he is an offender under section 166 of IPC. Such a beautiful coverage. With that, I am taking you to the last slide where we have one more case law where we will see two disobedience from two different public servants in that particular case. This judgment by Madras High Court in the case of Jay Shankar versus State is worth reading. Possibly read it once completely. 
I am discussing about two accused here who are also public servant that is accused 7 and accused 8. The allegation on accused 7 was he fabricated a false complaint. He was a sub inspector of police and he did so so that he was covered under section 166. One, he was public servant. Second, he has disobeyed the guidance of law by doing fabrication of false complaint and that caused injury to someone so he got punished under section 166. Likewise, accused 8 was a police constable who was supposedly go with the patient to the government hospital. Instead of he accompanying the patient, he sent someone else who was also an accused in the particular case. So by doing so, he has disobeyed the direction of law so that he also got convicted under section 166. These are the things that you need to remember when you are studying section 166. More details we will discuss when discussing section 167 but till then I am handing over the presentation to Nishan. I take this chance to thank Mother Nature. With that I am concluding this session. Please subscribe our channel. Please like, share and comment our videos. Thank you.